In this video, we're gonna show you how to build your own aeroponic cloning system. We'll cover everything you need and a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it. Here's everything that you're gonna need. A tote with a lid, optional, a dome to lock in humidity if your humidity is less than 60%, half inch flexible tubing, a submersible pump, ideally between 250 and 400 gallons per hour. You're gonna need a ruler for measuring out your um, tubing, three half inch barbed T connectors, four half inch barbed elbows, eight 330 degree spray heads, 13 soft cloning collars, weather stripping, a drill connected to a one and three quarter inch hole saw, duct tape, something to cut your tubing with, something to punch into your half inch tubing so that you can insert your spray head emitters and a marker to mark where you're gonna put your clone collars in on the top of your tote. First step is to trace where you wanna put your cloning collars and actually a really cool hack is to just pop out the inserts in the sheet where you wanna put the collars and then use those as a perfect little stencil. So let's do it. All right, it's time to drill these holes. Now the key to using a circular saw with plastic so you don't crack it is to run it in reverse. Although this one does have a pilot. So I'm gonna start it forward just to get the pilot moving. Okay, now I'm gonna run this in reverse as to avoid cracking. One down. Hole's done. <laughs> Talk about the duct tape. Now, if if this was cracking on you or you were worried it was a little brittle, this is pretty nice flexible plastic. But if it was more brittle, what you can do is you can place some duct tape over before you start drilling and that'll hold it from cracking. It'll help prevent and reduce the probability of cracking. This worked great without cracking, so I could go right to it, which is awesome. Save me some time. All right, so this tote does not have a watertight seal. So what's gonna happen is, the water is going to spray up onto the top of the lid here, and then it's going to run out to the edges. And then you can see the way that it clicks. Because it's not watertight, it's going to drip out onto our table here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a teardrop silicone weather stripping, and I'm just going to place it so that it's standing up a little bit around the inside edge here so that when I add the top, it now is perfectly sealed. So let's get to it. So I have already cut it and I've already pulled the adhesive tape off the back. This is what it looks like out of the roll. And I'm gonna just go ahead and stick it on. Really, really simple. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space here at the top so that lid can really push down into the silicone and create a watertight seal. And this stuff is pretty forgiving. You can kind of like take it off and redo it if you get off track a little bit. Okay, so give it an extra little squeeze and then we'll pop the top on. Make sure it clicks shut still and we should be in pretty good shape. All right, you might've noticed one other waterproof lacking point here. We have these two little holes and those are easy peasy. We're just gonna cover them with some duct tape and we should be in business. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and build this unit. So you can see it sitting inside. Obviously, depending on the dimensions of your tote, you might cut different lengths, but you don't want it super snug. You want to have it in the middle here so that when it sprays, um, it's kind of getting all of the um, clones that are hanging down. The build a manifold that's 12 inches long by seven inches wide and eight inches high. These are the dimensions that we used. You're going to go ahead and need to use some sort of cutting tool on your half inch uh, tubing. We used this one. 
Uh, but anything sharp will work. One piece that's two and a half inches high, that's what's gonna go here on the pump and then it's gonna connect to here. Two, two and a half inch pieces, they're gonna go out from the top here. Four, four and a half inch pieces to do the length. Two, five and a half inch pieces to do the size. All right, now let's get assembling. And a big tip is to get some warm water so you can dip your tubing in here and it's gonna make so much easier to deal with. So. I'm gonna do the next ones I'm working on in the warm water. So I'm gonna put these two guys in because those are coming next. Now let's put this one on the pump. Next guys, I'll pull these two out while I put those guys in to warm up. You can guess I've done this before. Oh, it's so much easier when it's warm, I can't even tell you. And I feel like warming it also helps it to kind of bend into, you know, straight positioning, because sometimes these guys can be a little crooked and curved and makes them a little temporarily malleable. All right, that looks good. Let's put these elbows on. They're still warm. It's starting to cool down and it's getting harder by the second. All right, so now that we got this all ready, all we got to do now, super easy, is we're gonna use a puncher. And if you don't have a puncher like this, you can use a little drill bit, but it's great. All you have to do is poke a little hole in this guy, these guys. And then once it does, you can thread your emitters, your sprayers into it. And now remember though, if you position this here, you can always twist it, but if there's two, make sure they're on the same line. Cause when you twist, it's gonna put them out of line. One there, one there. All right, sometimes squeezing them in when you're putting these in helps them get in there. So kind of pushing it together so it puckers. And they can be tricky, but that's that's not necessarily a bad thing because if it's loose and too easy to get in, it's probably gonna wind up leaking. All right, it's ready to roll. So we are ready to put this in the tote, fill it with water and plug her in. Okay, so now that we've got it built, next step is to put it into the unit and add some water. You want to dump that in for My job? <laughs> yeah. All right, just Here you let's go. send it. Yeah. Five gallons, which is half a ten. All right. Okay, great. And then this is going to spray everywhere, but I think it's always fun to see. So I'm just going to do it. Here, wait, wait, let me get those. Ready? <laughs> All right. A very quick test. All right. Turn it on. Working great. All right. So the next step is to set up the lid. First thing is to run the cord through one of the uh, cloning collar holes. Just the easiest way to keep it um, out of the way and I give it its own insert so that we don't lose any water through that hole. And then you are in good shape. All right, let's start cloning. So I'm gonna take a cut from this, this uh, Pearl and Jade Pothos right here. Isn't it beautiful? I'm gonna cut so there's a few inches of stem available. I'll keep this still. I'm gonna cut all these leaves off. Try not to leave them there. And look at that there, a few healthy leaves on top. And then right below this bottom node, I'm gonna do a cut, and I mean, this is gonna come out great. There's already some root development. And then I'm gonna do a quick scuff, optional. You know, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, don't. And then I'm just gonna dip it in some cloning gel. Get it for about 10 to 15 seconds, and this will help roots develop. All right. And then pop this collar on right below the last uh, plant uh, leaf node and pop it into the cloner. I'm gonna take the clone that Matt just cut and pop it in. I'm gonna do this 11 more times and we're off and running. Now, if your humidity is over 60% already, you don't need to do anything to keep these leaves from drying out. But in a room like this, where the humidity is around 35 to 40%, we need to do something. So. I'm gonna use the seed starting gnome. Now, unfortunately, it's a little long. So the way I'm gonna address that is with some duct tape. And so I'm just gonna tape down one corner of this, one side of this, show you. Pull this guy off, put it in. 
down just to make it a little smaller. Okay. I'm going to put some tape on the other side too. Real fancy here. Look at that. That's a little hack for you. It's on. And now we have a really tight seal. We don't have to worry about the humidity dropping. And this looks great. So this is gonna keep the humidity in. And once I start seeing roots pop through consistently on the plants, I'll start taking the dome off initially for an hour, then longer and longer to allow them to acclimate to the lower humidity in this room. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you have suggestions on how to make this system better or have a really cool system you've built, we'd love to hear about it and see it. So definitely send us a comment. For more great tips on how to grow life where you live, like and subscribe. Until next time.